Boys, I know it's hard to believe, but it's actually most likely out of all of these games, this Harry Potter one is probably the one that I would actually play. Yeah, that's that's kind of saying something. Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lace, and today we've got an upcoming global gacha game list by you, Brainsmoker, from the R Gacha Gaming subreddit. And so, boys, today let's run through a whole bunch of these different games. You'll see games with announced release dates, and then games in pre reg or with recent CBTs. And then we have one more games with official global release announcements. Today, we will talk about predominantly about these guys over here. However, before I talk about any of these ones, I want to talk about Uma Musume, which is probably one of the most anticipated games to come to global or that people are hoping to come to global. And so bam, Uma Musume, pretty derby global version confirmed in latest development log. Actually, almost fake news, maybe. And so the reason that it's like kind of almost fake news is because of this guy over here. OP, this doesn't confirm global, it just confirms overseas. And if you have a look at the text down here, the direct quote, the translation is essentially saying that they are developing a new overseas version of Uma Musume and a Google Play Games version. So this could actually mean, as this person has said, QTGs, China, Taiwan, Korea. It could actually mean that Uma Musume is being developed for any of these countries. However, it is, you know, even if it's being developed for any of these guys, it still means that it is a step closer for a global release. So kind of good news, but in a way, like there is some hopium there. All right. And so that said, let's head back over to this one over here. And considering we really don't have that much time, let's talk about all of these games from Soul Tide all the way down to Ark Legends. What I am going to be doing for this video is essentially speedrunning through, I think that's about like maybe even 12 games over here, having a look at their gameplay and just thinking, is it worth like for me giving it a try? Because just having a look at the gameplay component will tell me a little bit about like the mood, the atmosphere, the environments that they've built, it will tell me like the kind of gameplay that I'm to expect. And so I guess for me, it's kind of like at a glance, would I play this game? All right, and so let's almost get started. I say almost because I want to like kind of justify why I'm doing this list. Games in pre-reg or with recent CBTs, it means that these guys are probably going to be coming soon. If I have a quick scan at the ones down here, counter side, we've got Tower of Fantasy, we've got the GFLs, we've got the GFL2, we've got the Honkai Star Rail, we've got the Reverse 1999, and we've got the Arcanized Enfield, like a whole bunch of the games that I am anticipating. The majority of them don't actually have CBTs nor release dates. Okay, okay, okay. Let's get back to this one and let's kick things off with Soul Tide. So Soul Tide is an interesting one. This guy is actually being released in a couple of hours. I think maybe even six hours. However, I will show you guys a little bit of the gameplay to see if you are interested in it. So this is just a VOD from one of my live streams. And essentially you're running around all of these like different paths and you're trying to do uh, like 100% completion. It's quite linear puzzle. If you guys have played Revive Witch, I think you could kind of compare it to that. Let me find some gameplay for you. And so this is how the combat looks like. It's actually first person, which is quite interesting. As you can see, we have a whole bunch of different characters down here and they are using skills. I think I might be on auto mode and that's why they're just like doing things on their own. But essentially you got to like hit the opponents in the front and in the back. And there are different status effects. Maybe I'll go back to an early one. And here is probably a little bit of some better footage you can see on the right hand side we have some of the actions so you can take an action by doing like a clicking this one over here or using some of the sp to use like a better move for me personally i think like i will play this a little bit just like quite casually but i'm certainly not going to stick with it it's just that it's like not really what i'm looking for right now and so in terms of would i play it yeah i would give it probably like a seven or so but my guys do remember that this game is coming out probably in less than six hours after this video goes live so if you did want to try it by all means all right and so the next game we've got is dislight uh this game i believe is actually already released however if you aren't familiar with dislight you can head over to my buddy vulcan's channel and see a couple of the different videos he's made uh he has uh quite some ties with lilith games and so he has played quite a fair bit of dislight as you can see it is a turn-based game very much kind of looks like summoner's war epic 7 kind of thing except with like some pretty funky graphics i'm gonna have to say just 
just because it is like turn-based and the art style is a little bit more like Western, I'm probably going to trend towards more of like a 5 out of 10 would try. However, what I do know about AFK Arena Lilith Games Dislight is that their production value is typically pretty good. It's just that generally speaking, this is probably not my style. All right, and so after Dislight, we have Octopath COTC. Uh, I am honestly quite hyped about this game. I've actually done a video for this one. So essentially it is Octopath. If you guys are familiar with it, it is a pixel game and it is turn based. Very much like your traditional JRPGs. If you think like old school Final Fantasy with the pixel art and then like you're doing Cure, Cura or Fire, Fire and then stuff like that using Ethers to restore your MP. That is very much what Octopath is going to be. However, with this one, there is going to be an element of like choosing your own storyline, which is kind of cool. And so to be honest, like when I played through this game, I fell in love with it. So I'm going to say that this is probably at like an eight and a half out of 10 in terms of like wanting to play. Out of all of the games that I like kind of know from that list before, I think this one might be the one that I am looking forward to the most, Octopath Traveler. All right. And so next we've got Harry Potter Magic Awakened. Uh, we are starting to go into territory where I didn't think I would be going. Because if you guys have been watching me for a while, you'll know that I tend to focus on the anime games, you know? for reasons. But with this game, I have to say, it actually looks kind of good. It essentially looks like Blue Archive, but Harry Potter, which is pretty funny, right? So we have the mana gauge down here and then you use cards to go ahead and actually deal damage or like do combat, stuff like that. And you can also reposition. I'm not sure if he's going to reposition considering he's got like a bunch of trolls tanking, but like you can move your character from here over to here to dodge attacks and stuff like that. It's actually so funny. Oh, there he goes. He repositions. It's actually so funny how close this looks like to Blue Archive. We're just fighting a lot of different mobs. It looks like spiders. But in terms of like the skill gauge as well as like, you know, aiming those skills, it's almost identical. And so just judging from that gameplay, as well as all of these graphics, this one, I would actually rate it at like kind of like a seven. And remember, this is coming from somebody who usually just sticks to anime games, right? I have to admit, just like going through this one real quick, a lot of these different systems, it looks kind of exciting. And so next on the list, we have Echoes of Mana. This was um this was an interesting one to watch. So here is the gameplay. Essentially, we're going to be going around and hitting things with a party. And I think in this game, you can actually switch party members. So for example, we have three of these characters and you're controlling this one right now. And so it looks like we have a button over here, which possibly means that we can control another one of our teammates. I don't know if the player actually engages it, but this is what the gameplay looks like. For me, I was a Mana fan uh, a long time ago. I'm not sure if I'm a Mana fan right now, and I'm not sure if I'm a fan of this one right here. I think it's just kind of like not exactly what I'm looking for. I've probably played enough of these games. I, I'm not overly invested. I kind of look at it. I'm like, okay, this looks cool. The graphics look all right, but it kind of looks like a, it's kind of like a Mitrosphere to me. And if you guys don't know Mitrosphere, you guys can go check that out. It's by Crunchyroll Games. But essentially, it just feels like more of a niche game. I know it's anime oriented, but it's probably not up my alley right now. And so as for if I would try this one, probably on the side of like a 4 out of 10. All right. And so next we've got Time Defenders. This one's a... This one's an interesting one. Uh, the best way to describe this one is essentially Arknights, but with 3D characters. Oh, that's a bit loud. Okay, let me turn that down a bit. But you can see that we have waves of, I think they're zombies. I'm not 100% sure, but essentially you're going to be deploying op Okay, you're going to be deploying units to go ahead and block them from getting to the exit. And as the guys come in, we can see we are going to have our main character doing some damage. He's going to go fight them. And I'm not sure what the lady with the briefcase is doing, but you can kind of see the gameplay, right? We've got a mage or rather an archer, a ranged unit over here. I think he's doing some electric stuff. And so, yeah, from this gameplay, I think you guys can see why I would call it Arknights, but 3D and probably a little bit less depressing and more grotesque. As for how likely I would play this, I would probably give it also a 4 out of 10. Certainly not what I'm looking for right now. And so yeah, that's that. Uh, time defenders, guys. All right, and so next we've got Nike, Goddess of Victory. I'm thinking that this bad boy is probably going to be coming out in about August. And right now, there are a whole bunch of different content creators that got access to the closed beta. Not me, not your boy. I don't know what I did wrong, but they didn't ask me, man. It's... <laughs> 
Anyway, let's go ahead and see one of the content creators, my boy Vulcan, and let's have a look at the gameplay itself. And as you can see from the art, it is uh, it is going to be an eyeful. Let's put it that way. And so we have a whole bunch of different characters down here, and we are, as he likes to put it, I think we're going to be playing Time Crisis over here. So we got bam, 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 and then we got bam, 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 and I'm pretty sure we can also actually activate skills. Now it's uh, yeah, it's a little bit shaky. However, going from the gameplay itself, like honestly, it looks really, really interesting. And the animations, whilst a little bit fan servicey, I would say that it is really freaking gorgeous. Vulcan here is playing in portrait mode. However, people have found a way to actually hack it into landscape mode, and apparently, it plays even better. However, just from what I've seen, like from the gameplay here, I've actually watched quite a fair bit of footage. I'm gonna say I think Nikke for me to try on the scale of 1 to 10, it's probably going to be at about like an 8 out of 10. And so next we have Alice Fiction. This one, this one's actually a really interesting one. So this one's from your boy FG3000. I'm pretty sure everyone in the gacha scenes knows them. And this is the gameplay for that one. Uh, this is actually very, very interesting. As you can see, it is kind of like a match three system. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip. And essentially what you do is you break crystals so that you can kind of align like three of a kind and then break those to activate a combo. I'm pretty sure he's probably explaining it in the video right now. So from here, he's going to break the green crystal and then he's going to pop the blue crystals and then he's going to try to form some kind of like combos, right? So three yellows, uh, I, I don't know what he's doing. So two blues, reds, and then he's got three greens. That's freaking hectic. But to be honest, this is probably one of the more innovative gameplays that I've seen. I know like match threes aren't really exactly that innovative, but like compared to all of the other like turn-based stuff or kind of like a lot of the auto stuff, and well, Nikia was also very like interesting gameplay as well. I think that, oh wait, there's an auto mode. Okay, well I'll probably use the auto mode, but in terms of art style, in terms of gameplay, like honestly, from what I've watched from FG's video, I am I'm a, quite a fan of this one. And so in terms of how willing I am to give it a shot, I would say probably a seven out of 10, which is which is still pretty good. Keeping in mind that like my top one right now is about 8.5 out of 10. All right, so yeah, let's uh, let's call that one and move on to the next one, which is going to be Seven Mortal Sins. All right, so Seven Mortal Sins, very, very much a, um, a fan servicey game. And this footage is going to be from your boy Scion Storm. I'm pretty sure a lot of you also know him. And as you can see, it is very, very similar to the uh, battle system of Konosuba. So we have like the blue gauge charging up. And when the blue gauge is actually full, we will go ahead and make our move. Except the difference from this one and Konosuba is that Konosuba is very much 2D. And as you can see, we have like the 3D half chibis, which I actually quite like. In terms of the gameplay itself, I'm actually quite a fan of this style. If I'm not wrong, Summoner's War is actually like this one. However, in terms of the art style and stuff, actually, this kind of does look like Summoner's War, doesn't it? But yeah, just from like the gameplay itself, as well as like, you know, some of the art, I would say this is probably trending towards like a 6 or a 6.5 for me in terms of willingness to try. I do see a lot of live 2D though, which is very, very nice. But yeah, just based on the gameplay itself, 6.5. All right, next we have Disney Mirrorverse. This is, uh, they're all interesting ones actually. So this is from, uh, I've never seen him before, but Unstable Gamer. And so here is the gameplay of Disney Mirrorverse. It is, as you can imagine, very Disney oriented. And I think we are Sully from Monsters Inc. And it is actually an action RPG, which is really, really cool. I, I would say not quite punishing Grey Raven level, but we are playing as Disney characters and we have some skills and we are going around bashing other characters up. I have to say, I'm kind of like a moderate Disney fan. I'm not like a major, major fan, but I'm not kind of just like ultra low key either. Disney, generally speaking, will throw quite a fair bit of money or their assets into these games. I think it it actually looks quite cool. However, as you guys know, I'm in it for the animu. I'm in it for the booba. And so, I mean, Sully ain't giving me my fix. You know what I mean? And therefore, in terms of willingness to play, probably at about about a 5.5 to a 6. I have to admit, this actually kind of looks fun. It reminds me a little bit of Kingdom Hearts. I don't know why, but it does. But yeah, that is my rating for this one. So let's talk about next, Enigmite Prophecy. All right, I remember this one. This was, uh, this was Bejeweled. So essentially it is truly match three. And then you use your characters to go ahead and spank them. 
pretty much. That's yeah, that's that's kind of it. I think it's not really like the puzzles and dragons type. It's more it really is bejeweled. And so if I go back to a little bit of the gameplay, you see that they are essentially matching a bunch of jewels. When they come together, they blow up and they'll deal damage all on the enemy over there. However, in terms of like, would I play this one? I I am not really looking for like a match three or kind of like a puzzle game like that. It certainly does look interesting and it is like, you know, in the anime style that I am looking for, but like, it just looks a little bit more like old school and I'm not really a fan of that, right? Like I'm kind of at the stage where I want UIs that are kind of like Arknights, that are kind of like Blue Archive, like Punishing Grey Raven, like Genshin Impact or Honkai Impact. Okay, Honkai is a little bit overboard, but you guys can kind of tell, right? Like this, uh, the interface, it, it just all feels really old old school like a like a 2000s game like like puzzles and dragons and so it's for that reason that i would probably bump this down to like a five it looks fun like don't get me wrong the gameplay itself looks like a, a five out of ten for me but in terms of if i would stick with it probably not all right and so next we've got shadows of valdora okay this is where it's starting to get a little bit dank this is an interesting one <laughs> I, uh, would it be like Cookie Run Kingdom? I'm not actually sure what I could equate this one to. Whilst it is certainly um kind of interesting, it also kind of looks half-baked, but that may be just because like we're at the very start, right? Because scrolling through, I did see like a town system. I do see like some of these stat menus as well as like the gameplay itself. It looks, <laughs> it looks okay, but you guys already know I'm in it for the anime and this isn't exactly anime however i do have to say that the gameplay actually kind of you know i'm, I'm kind of interested i'm a little bit interested and so in terms of like willingness to give it a shot probably would be at the four out of ten mm, okay maybe maybe a three out of ten 3.5 out of 10 3.5 out of 10 it's pretty fair i think for me it's just like certainly not what i'm looking for and this style is also oh waifu all right after that we've got liberty city and if you guys have played GTA before, uh, it is certainly that. It is very much about the about the gangsters, and it very much is about the street fighting. So, I I, I really don't know what to say about this. Uh, I, I saw a tank do a taunt, and I see a whole bunch of gangsters with guns and and bats and uh, and, a, and a mob boss. And he, I don't know what he's going to do when he's going to come in and I see money dropping everywhere. Honestly, this is freaking wild. However, I, um, <laughs> yeah, this is probably one of the games that I'm most least likely to play. I would say probably a 2.5 or a 3 out of 10, simply because it's just not my thing. Like, don't get me wrong, guys. I love GTA. Like GTA San Andreas was certainly one of the first GTA games I've ever played. But yeah, it's certainly not what I'm looking for in terms of a mobile game. Again, probably about a 3.5 out of 10. And so second last, Eroica. Ah, okay. This one is, I think it was an interesting one. Very much an anime one, very much a side scrolling uh, with a semblance of a system of mana as well as a skill one, two, and three. Not sure I'm really that big of a fan of it because when I look at this and I see the gameplay, I'm kind of thinking to myself like, I would just go play Epic 7 if I wanted something like this. Like, no offense to Eroica, but as I skipped through this, it was just like, Epic 7 is just ultra polished, right? It's a leader in what it is doing right now. And so unfortunately, whilst it looks like, it looks okay, like, look, we got 3D models and we actually have like an overworld where we can run around. In terms of like the game itself and all of these, like, oh, using up these jemmies to go ahead and attack them with like certain skills, yeah, like I said, I would rather go play Epic 7. And so in terms of willingness to try, I'd probably give it a 4 out of 10. I'd probably try this one before San Andreas, or rather Liberty City. Alright, and so we have Lucky Last Arc Legends. I can't remember this one actually. If Okay, this one was kind of interesting. It's kind of using like the Blue Archive system. Sorry if it's like, you know, if I'm misnaming it, but to be honest, Blue Archive is one of the first ones that I, I remember with this like mana recharging system and then using skills. I can say that the production value looks pretty freaking good. However, certainly not what I am looking for. I'm looking for the Animu. I'm looking, okay, actually, you know what? This is kind of reminding me. Wait, are those deer ears? What the frick? Yeah, like to say the least, I'm not 100% into the style of it. Although, I mean, I guess you guys could argue that I am already playing a game that's similar to this. So in terms of like willingness to try this one, uh, probably another four out of 10 for me. Guys, I am not throwing shade on that Liberty City game. It's just like, 
it's just not really exactly a game that I would be playing, right? Like if I wanted to go fight some gangsters and stuff, I will just play like the normal GTA. So yeah, that's that. And I think with that, that might actually be bringing us to the end of this whole list. So yeah, just to recap, looking through all of these ones, I would say like my top wood play is going to be like Nike, it's going to be Octopath, it's going to be Alice Fiction, and then the Harry Potter game. Like guys, that Harry Potter game actually looks kind of cool. And then potentially like Dislight, Time Defenders, and then probably the rest. Like guys, don't get me wrong. I'm sure there's a lot of money and a lot of production value in them, but it's just not for me. And so my dudes, with that, that is um that is a list of the pre-registration or the recent CBT games that are upcoming. So we can probably expect them quite soon. So yeah, I have to admit, I probably didn't know anything about like 80% of them. And to be honest, I probably wouldn't be playing 80% of them anyway. However, my dudes, that is enough about me and it is time to pass on the question to you guys. Out of all of these games over here, which ones are you hyped for? And interestingly enough, did seeing some of the gameplay for any of these kind of convince you to give them a shot? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you do end up leaving something, I would really appreciate it because it means you've watched up until the end of the video. So thank you guys so much. If you guys did enjoy this video, please consider a like, a sub, a notification bell thing. Otherwise, as, uh, as your boy Sully once said, all good things must come to an end. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.